Beginning with example one, notice that our directions are to write them in if-then form. Right now it's just a statement, but it's not written as a conditional statement. So I don't necessarily have a clear-cut hypothesis and conclusion given to me already. So we want to go ahead and take a look at this and see if we can turn these into a conditional statement. Now, for a conditional statement, we really need two parts to be a hypothesis and a conclusion. What are the two things that you see in this first example, Mrs. Palermo, that we could really pick apart? All right, so I'm reading it. I'm thinking they're talking about something with mammals, and you're also talking about how it breathes oxygen. Okay, and those are our two parts. Now, to state this is a conditional statement, we need to use the words if and then. But I don't want to just say, I want to make sure it's a sentence. I don't want to say, if mammal breathe oxygen. Yeah, that doesn't You know, I've got to right. mm -hmm. add some more words in there. Mm -hmm. So how could I maybe word this? Can I add words besides just if and then? You can add words as long as it's not going to change any meaning. Okay, okay. Well, so I'm thinking, we know mammals are animals. So if I said, if, we, if an animal is a mammal, then it breathes oxygen. That is wonderful. Okay, so then this next one, again, we need to pick it apart as to two parts. It says, I will go to the game if I get all of my homework done. Well, right away, I notice something that's different in the other one is there's an if already in it. Oh, okay. So does that mean that's where I should start? That's where we want to start because oh, we know that, that if makes means it easy. that's the hypothesis. Okay. So if I said, if I get all my homework done, that's one part, then I will go to the game. That sounds wonderful. Yay. Now, the only time I want to flip-flop the order like what we did there is if they do have that word if in the statement, that later in the sense. statement. Otherwise, we want to keep it in the order that they give it to us. That makes sense. Okay, what about this last one? A line which bisects a segment contains the midpoint of a segment. Okay, I like what you, we did in the first part A, if I could break it up into two yes. parts because it doesn't have that if word in it yeah. anywhere or then. So I'm thinking... Um, something about the line bisecting a segment, maybe is one part, and that basically means it contains the midpoint. So that's okay. kind of a clear cut. Yeah. So, so if I throw in the if then, if a line bisects a segment, so I can take that word which out, no big deal. Right. Then it contains the midpoint of the segment. Wonderful. Okay. Example two, true or false. It says, if false, provide a counterexample. Now, one word that is somewhat new to us is this one right here. Well, we did that in chapter one. Yeah, refresh me. A counterexample would just be if it is false, give an example that shows that it is so false. So do we need several or? Just one. Just one. So just need one. Now, it says, you got to first decide if it's true or false. Okay. So we, so we don't first know decide if it's that. False. Okay. And then if it's false, we can provide a counterexample. Now remember back to chapter one when we talked about this, we determined that it's a little easier and less work when it's false because right. you just need a counterexample. So kind of statement. Ooh, a conditional statement. I see the and if and then. If and then. You can see those words. So the if part that follows, this is your hypothesis. Right. So if this, if in a conditional statement, when you're looking at it to, to, to determine its truth value, this part you already know is true. The conditional or the hypothesis is always going to be true. You got to start with a true part. Okay. So I know that we're looking at just odd numbers. In yeah. This one. No events. You're only looking at odd numbers. Then the conclusion part, what follows the then, this is the part that you're deciding is this part true or false. Okay. So if you're saying a number is odd, to so think about all those odd numbers out there. Okay, so like one, three, five, seven. Yeah, just think about those. Right. Then it is divisible by three. Oh, well that's definitely not true. Why is that? Well, one. One First, is an odd, and it's definitely not divisible by three. So I, you would say this is false. Uh-huh. And, and I your counterexample would just be one. Yeah, and really I could use one, five, seven. There's a lot of them that I could yeah, use as counterexamples. Yeah, just in the beginning. And, and again, you only, only need, need one. one counterexample. There's multiple out there, and that's cool. Okay. So I'm going to give you a conditional statement. It says, if two angles each measure 30 degrees, then they are congruent. Now, just real quick, let's make sure we know what's the hypothesis and what's the conclusion in this statement. Okay, hypothesis follows the if, so two angles 
each measure, measure 30 degrees. Wonderful. What would the conclusion be? That follows the then, so they are congruent. All right. Now, what is a converse? All right. Converse, if I remember correctly, you take the conditional and you switch the if-then part. So you take the hypothesis and switch it with the conclusion. Right. Okay. Still so has the words if and then Still in. has the words if and then. So let's go ahead and let's state that. What would that converse right, look so like? So it would then? say if they are congruent. Now, can't really start with they. So what are they? Two angles. So if two angles are congruent, then they each measure 30 degrees. And I love what you did there, Mrs. Palermo. You're right. In English, we know you don't ever start with the pronoun until you know what it's talking about. Exactly. So if the two angles are congruent, then you can use the they. They each measure 30 degrees. Love it. Okay, what about the inverse? The inverse, don't forget, is where I want to negate the conditional statement. So I want to negate the hypothesis and I want to negate the conclusion. And negate means to basically throw knots in, right? Right. All right, so conditional statement. If two angles each do not measure 30 degrees, then they are not congruent. Sounds wonderful. So if two angles each do not measure 30 degrees, then they are not congruent. Now again, reminder that the statements that we've written so far, they're not, you're changing the actual meaning of the conditional because you're yeah. flipping things around. You're using the same words. And we're going to come back and take a look at their truth value in a minute yeah. too. What about the contrapositive? All right, so now, don't what forget, do we do? What do we do you again? You can either start with your conditional negate and flip, or start with your converse and just um, negate the converse, or start with the inverse and just flip the inverse. There's oh a lot of gosh, ways to think about all this. these decisions. You know what I like? I think I'm going to just. Um, I'm going to negate the converse. Okay. So I'm going to say if two angles are not congruent, then they each do not measure 30 degrees. And that is perfect. Now, let's talk for a minute. We have this word truth value or the, these words truth value off to the side. Truth value is just a way to determine is the statement now a true or false statement. So let's start with a conditional statement. If two angles each measure 30 degrees, so let's draw a picture of this because the hypothesis is what you're given. Mm -hmm. All right, so we have two angles and this one is 30 degrees and this one is also 30 degrees. If two angles each measure 30 degrees, then they are congruent. What do you think? Do you agree with that? Is that true? Well, yeah, because if they both have the same, they both have basically are measuring 30 degrees, that's the same measure. Same measure means congruent. Exactly. Okay. Okay. So now let's take a look at the converse. Now this is what we're given. Two angles that are congruent. So you're starting with congruent angles. Sorry, that was supposed to be a little tick mark. Starting with congruent angles, then they each measure 30 degrees. No. That's, Why not? That's false. Now, if I, if I say false, we did this earlier, should I provide a counterexample you to support that? You should provide a counterexample. Okay, so I'm going to say false, and then I'm going to, my counterexample, I'm going to draw another picture below. So what if I have an angle that is 40 degrees and then another angle that's 40 degrees. Now I started with two angles that are congruent. I got to start with the if part, but it disproves the statement because they're not each met or they don't each measure 30 degrees. So if you can have the same hypothesis but show a different conclusion, that is a counterexample. It's perfect. Okay. All right, let's take a look at the inverse. If two angles each do not measure 30 degrees, then they are not congruent. So we have two angles that are not 30, they're anything but 30, then they are not congruent. The okay. knots start to get a little confusing Yeah, sometimes. it does get, let me like, let me sort through this in my head. I'm thinking possibly false because, and, and I'm gonna give a counterexample because then I'm hoping my counterexample will work, because if it doesn't, I'm going to have to try something else. So if two angles each do not measure 30 degrees. So if I have, let's say the two angles I'm dealing with are 50, because they both don't each measure 30 degrees, right? Right. But they are congruent. So what you made, you made a counterexample because you made a different conclusion. You so showed it, that they were congruent. So that makes, that's what, so my false statement was... I was right. Yes. Yay. All right. Last one. Contrapositive. 
If two angles are not congruent, then they do not each measure 30 degrees. So we need two angles that are not congruent. Okay, so I'm going to give this one one tick mark and this one two. So they both, they're not then congruent. the question is, could they each equal 30 degrees? No, because if they're not congruent, that means they have different measures. So they... So one could be 30 and one could be 40. Right. They can't both each measure 30 degrees. So that would be a true statement. That is a true statement. Now... And again, thinking about this, if I took out the word not, could they each measure 30 degrees? No. That's yeah, what you said. So you have yeah. to keep that word not in to make it true. And, you know, one thing I'm thinking when I'm going through this, I had really no issues with the conditional and converse, with the truth value. That was quick. Inverse and contrapositive, because those knots that we threw in, it was kind of tricky. So is there a way to, like, <laughs> not stress my brain out on this? There is. When we're looking at equivalent statements, so statements that have the exact same truth value, so they're either both true or they're both false, every time your conditional statement is true, your contrapositive will also be true. So if the conditional is false, then the contrapositive will also be false. Ah. And the converse and the inverse, they also have equivalent truth values. That doesn't mean that they're the exact same statement. Okay. They're just, they have the same truth value. If one is true, the other is also true. Is there any way that all four of the statements, the if-then statements, could be all true? Sure. Or all false? We're all false. Okay. But whatever your conditional statement is, your contrapositive will be as well. That makes sense. Whatever your converse is, your inverse will be as well. So that makes it easy. Oh, yeah. All right. Last example. True or false? If false, provide a counterexample. So we've done one like this earlier, but notice this time around... It's throwing in statements about points and lines, which is kind of hitting back to that postulate mm -hmm. page that we learned. Right. So three points are always contained in a line. Three points are always contained in a line. Well, I know that two points always make a line. There's always a line between two points, but you could have three points that are not all collinear. Ah, so you're thinking leaning towards... I'm thinking it's false. false. So if it says false, so let me put a false down. I'm going to write down. We can always erase if we make a mistake. Um, so you're saying you, th and she used some great vocab. Good job, Miss <laughs> Flair, or Miss Hope Gravy. Hi, Mrs. Flairmo. Um, you said collinear or not collinear. So you said they could not be collinear. So I need two points to start with. And we always know those two are going to form a line. Yeah. And if I throw in another point that's not on the same line, so not collinear with that, that would be maybe down here? Sure. Let me name these points with capital letter. So this would be a counterexample for our statement. And one thing to notice is that the counterexample is a picture. Just like on the last slide, we had pictures for counterexample. That's perfectly fine. Yeah. Um, if this was true, a statement, the support for it would be, if they asked you to support it, you could support it with one of those postulates. Okay, so like for example, if they said two points are always contained on a line, then I know that there was a postulate that stated that. In fact, um, it was the very first one on that sheet. It was named postulate five on our sheet. I wouldn't say that. But it is. it says through any two points there exists exactly one line. That would be the statement that I could use to support that. That makes sense. Awesome.